If you want to add more art to your magical craft, stay tuned. <laughs> For the past couple of years, I've led a two-hour crayon coven manifestation circle for my Magical You community. Each new moon, solstice, and equinox, we gather our crayons, colored pencils, watercolor paints, and other art supplies to cast visual spells. We dress in colors of the season, wear creative headwear, from flower crowns to tiaras, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> now, for the first half of this ritual, I discuss the current astrological season and the strongest energies that are available for manifesting. I then teach participants how to create a customized sacred seal that reflects their personal intentions through color magic. For the second half of the ritual, we combine our energies for a powerful group manifestation ritual. While the emphasis on fun and creativity may seem frivolous to some, the combination of art and magic is deceptively powerful. Since the beginning of human creativity, art and magic have, have walked hand in hand. Figurines used in rituals, primitive masks used in celebrations, and ancient drawings found in caves are some of the earliest examples of art made for magical purposes. In the ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead, images illustrate magical spells to help cross into the underworld. Italian Renaissance painter Botticelli created great paintings that were considered to hold magical and protective powers that guarded the city of Florence, Italy, while other paintings invoked malevolent magic. In modern times, Art magic is the blending of art media with the metaphysical practice of witchcraft. Art magic comes in various flavors, including drawing, painting, sculpture, digital, photography, written, and music. However, you do not need to go to art school or even consider yourself artistic to create spells with art. To be an art witch simply means that you enjoy expressing your personal magic through an intuitive process of creation. Many art witches also work with candles, nature, and divination, so feel free to experiment with the mediums that call you. My introduction to art magic came from candle magic. Early in my magical journey, I frequented a magical candle shop where you would consult with a staff witch who would create a customized intention candle for you. And after telling them your desire, they would carve a sacred seal into a large colored candle. They'd anoint it with intention oil and sprinkle it with glitter. They would then give you instructions on how and when to burn the candle. I was fascinated with the grimoire that the store witches consulted to choose their seals. It was stained with oil and glitter, and this book contained magical symbols used to manifest love, healing, and wealth. I was always curious to know where these symbols came from and what made them magical. But after several years of purchasing these customized candles, the store's owner self-published a spiral-bound version of this grimoire. I was ecstatic to try carving my own intention candles. However, no matter how hard I tried, my candles never looked as pretty as the ones that the staff witches made for me. But my manifestations were still successful. That experience taught me the importance of focus and intention. I also learned that the seals used in that magical grimoire weren't necessarily the greatest mystical secrets. The seals were a combination of astrological glyphs elemental symbols, as well as basic shapes, such as circles, stars, and lines that have been used and understood by humans for thousands of years. When I discovered the magic that was imbued to these so-called mundane symbols, I realized a fact that has informed my magical practice ever since, and it's this. Nothing has meaning other than the meaning that you give it. How you express and practice your magic is intensely personal. Therefore, the methods you use only need to make sense to you. As I studied candle magic, I learned that carving a seal into a candle casts a visual spell into the candle wax. 
As it burns and disappears, the carved intention is transmuted into the astral plane. My crayon coven method of magic is similar in that you focus on your intention as you draw or paint unique symbols and then activate it energetically. You then add your hand created symbol to rituals by placing it under a candle or taping the crayon symbol around the candle. And as the candle burns, the flame amplifies your intention. I'm excited to share my crayon coven process for you to try by yourself or with friends. You'll need a white candle for your altar. You can use a red candle, but you can use white to substitute any other color. You can use incense. You can use a plant, flowers, or crystals of your choice. You can have a beverage to drink. I'd say one or two sheets of white paper, crayons, color pencils, markers, paint, etc., and some scissors. Step one, create a sacred space. Every magic ritual starts with an altar. After cleansing your work desk with sacred smoke, add natural elements, candle for fire, incense for air, crystals or a plant for earth, and a liquid beverage to drink that represents water. Step two, gather your materials. Gather your art supplies, paper, crayons, colored pencils, markers, paint and brushes, rulers and scissors, etc. Step three, set your intention. Ground yourself with a few deep breaths and meditate on what you want to manifest. Step four, create and or draw a sacred symbol. Consider how you'd like to represent your intention visually, but you don't need to be a Picasso. Think about what you can do within your skill set, regardless of your talent level. You can create a sigil, which can be made by writing down your intention and moving the letters around to create a unique symbol that is only known to you. To learn more about sigils, I recommend researching various methods online, as well as the book Sigil Witchery by Laura Tempest Zaycroft. You can use basic shapes found in nature, such as circles, squares, and spirals, which are the basis of sacred geometry. Triangles are thought to symbolize balance and harmony. The three-sided shape can also be related to the body, mind, and spirit. Circles seemingly have no beginning or end, so they represent a never-ending loop. As such, Circles can be thought of as a symbol of oneness. Squares represent a very practical and solid energy, so that shape is considered foundational and dependable. To give you an example, one of my favorite symbols is what I call the fiery heart seal. You can imagine a heart in front of a fiery sun. If you're watching uh -huh. this on YouTube, I'm holding up a candle and this is what it looks like. If you're listening to this podcast, I describe this symbol as a heart on top of a fiery sun. I have another version here. Similar to the sacred heart symbol found in religious art, the fiery heart symbol is used in magical rituals to increase courage, commitment, and motivation. I have personally used this symbol to kick off diets, start new habits, and release bad ones with much success. The symbols include the sun, the sunburst, and a heart. The sun represents energy, vitality, and creativity, and the heart represents courage and strength. The combined colors, red, orange, and yellow, add magical correspondences of success, passion, and happiness. The combined shapes and colors alert your subconscious that you are on fire and ready for transformation. I recommend using a fiery heart symbol with a red candle. I like writing my intention or petition letter on the back of the symbol. As Tuesdays are ruled by Mars, the god of action, that's an especially powerful day to perform this ritual. Step five, activate the symbol in a ritual. To perform this ritual, light a white candle at your desk. This will be your work light that lets spirit know that you are about to begin your spiritual work. Choose 
or cut a piece of paper that will fit around or under your candle. And on the back of that paper, write your intention, your incantation, or a petition letter. Your intention can be an affirmative statement of one to three sentences written in present tense with emotion. For example, I am so happy or excited or grateful to have a well-paying position where I work from home. On the front, draw, color, or paint your symbol while focusing on your desired outcome. And when your drawing is complete, place the symbol in front of you with your white work candle on top of it. Cup your hand around the flame and speak your intention aloud. This activates the symbol. Remove your symbol paper from under your white work candle. You can take that symbol and tape it around the candle or place it under your candle. So you'd light that red candle or whatever color you use and visualize your desired outcome. You meditate until you feel complete. Then you can drink your beverage. <laughs> End your ritual by saying amen and so it is or so mote it be or ashe, whichever ending that your tradition uses. Depending on your time and privacy requirements, you can let your candle continue to burn or you can snuff it out and continue burning it at another time. And you can go ahead and snuff out your white work candle. Step six, complete the ritual. Make sure that your red candle burns down all the way, however long it takes. After that candle has burned down completely, you can burn, bury, or keep that symbol in your book of shadows. You can also just throw it away. If you attended a crayon coven where members were creating the symbol, you would see how the symbol is interpreted differently by each person. One witch might draw the sun within the heart, while another witch will add their own personal sigil to the center of the symbol. Someone else might use different colors depending on what resonated with them. And that is the beauty of art magic. No one expresses themselves the exact same way, and all the symbols are powerful. If you'd like to learn more about owning your power and developing your intuition, please listen to my podcast episode called Own Your Power. In that episode, I teach ways that you can increase your magical confidence.